Hi guys, welcome back to Farmers. In this video, I want to do a quick introduction to regulatory. Stay tuned. Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. Um, in one of my previous posts, I had asked who would like a regulatory intro video and tons of you came through to say me, 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 me. So here it is. I will also do a cannabis intro video because that was the next one requested. So hang in there. And if you still have more video requests, please make them known ASAP because December will be holiday time and farmers will be away, okay? Um, unless there's like breaking news or like impromptu live videos, um, we're just gonna be back in January. So let's get into the video. Oh, did I also mention that you guys need to go to the Facebook page, the Instagram page, and like subscribe share even here on youtube make sure you subscribe because we're on our road to 2000 subscribers please help us reach our targets before christmas and yeah thank you for your support thank you for watching thank you guys so much for all the love all the appreciation i do see each and every comment each and every encouragement and like you know it means the world so thank you guys so much and back to the video so what is regulatory um it seems so basic but a lot of people actually don't know each industry generally has a regulator to make sure that things go according to plan and to catch the bad guys and to make sure everybody's in line so when concerning pharmacy or the pharmaceutical industry the regulator will be a health authority. In most countries, there's like a board or a council, or in South Africa, it's a SAPRA now, the health regulator, um, and it's the health and products regulatory authority. Um, it's now SAPRA, it's the old MCC, for those who just know the word MCC, because I know for a long time it rang as MCC, so a lot of people didn't actually realize that there was a switch, so yeah. It's bigger it's better they've improved they've increased um, the scope they've added medical devices so now they do check each and everything that is classified as a health product or a device and that thing has to be regulated and regulation just means that you monitor it you check for its claims its safety its efficacy and the quality of it you know just to make sure that the general population and every user is going to be safe so this regulation encompasses a wide range of subsectors there's vet veterinary health there's cams product which is by the way the new big hype because of the new regulations that now all cams have to be regulated. So let's jump right into um, some tips if you're looking to get into regulatory, if you're an aspiring regulator, what is it that you actually need to know? I feel like it doesn't really matter what course you do. There's tons of like short courses or like actual postgrad degrees, um, master degrees that you can do, but they all will point back to SAPRA if you're in SA because that's the regulator and therefore SAPRA's regulations and guidelines are what you need to get acquainted with. So I would say familiarize yourself with all the regulations. I mean, 
all of them. If you want to go specifically into CAMS, then look at the CAMS regulation, but just know what it entails um, to register a product and what the guidelines and the regulations are. Don't go spending tons of money on these like 50k courses that will only give you theory which is already freely available to you. Um, I don't think many of them actually practically show you um, and give you like a dossier to register or to assess. If they do, that's great, but you might want to find that out before you enroll um, because there's a lot of confidentiality issues and people don't usually want to disclose information unless you sign like NDAs and hectic stuff. Um, they're not going to give you actual dossiers to do. So it gets a little tricky with like volunteering or, you know, doing shadowing programs. Um, but we're getting there, you know, there's a, it's in the pipeline anyways. So let's just look at the ECTD because that's the new format for dossiers. Okay, so what is a dossier? A dossier is basically a file for like a drug. Okay, I'm going to keep it simple because you have files for a lot of other stuff, but let's take like a basic drug like paracetamol. You're going to have to know who the manufacturers are for the API, so that's the active, who the manufacturers are for the final product, um, who's making it, where are they sourcing it from, what processes are they using for manufacturing. You're going to need to know who's the applicant because sometimes the applicant isn't the manufacturer. You're going to need to know they have all their valid documentations, um, certificates or um, access documents and a whole lot of other stuff. But it gets a little technical. Um, but yeah, the dossier is basically all of that drug's information nicely, neatly packed into five sections. So you have module one, two, three, four, five. Um, and let's just stick to module one at this stage, which will be the basic information specific to the applicant and the country of application. So for South Africa, it's going to be Z. A CTD, let's say for Spain, for example, it would be Spain CTD, etc. etc. So E just means the electronic version of the common technical document. Thank God they moved to this electronic format. Back in the day, people had to walk around with suitcases this full of paperwork for one single drug. Okay, it was hefty and tremendously. Um, now you just walk around with a USB little file um, and you're good to go. So this electronic common technical document has really made things a lot simpler because you can exchange files, folders, you can log in um, and check uh, submissions. It's a lot more easier. More easier? It's a lot easier. But yeah, so... The ECTD format is the new format. That's what dossiers come as. If you're a regulator, an assessor, or an applicant, this is the format you need to use for your drug and your submission. Okay, um, what else can I say? I it, There's so much. You guys will have to ask specific questions because like, there's just too much to say. But there was a question from a third year student that asked, um, I think it was like an assignment they had, and they asked about like, what is the relevance between um, the pharmaco, no, it was the physical chemical props of an API and regulatory. And what I would like to say on that is that there is sections, for example, 32S, which is for the substance, um, basically the API um, and then the finished products that you need to, as a regulator, look for if this API is even what it says it is, um, if the suppliers or the manufacturers have tested it, if the tests are valid. Um, and so the physical chemical props usually look for things like isomerism, polymorphism. You know, you want to know that the form in which you get the API or the raw material 
is in fact the form that is um, safe for production or for manufacturing because if it has an isomer and the isomer for example is toxic or maybe it like inactivates the drug or causes other stuff you need to ensure that you only use the correct form so it's little things like that um, as a regulator for quality and bioequivalence that's really what I would focus on um, if you're an applicant, obviously there's a format and there's like um, application guides so that you'll know what to include um, and what they are looking for, but all the information needs to be there to make sure your drug is legit. I mean, your application and your dossier is full, complete, and legit um, because it goes through screening, it'll go through evaluation, and then, and then, and then. Um, what else can I say? I don't want this video to be long. I'd rather answer specific questions. So comment below. Let me know what questions you have, what you think about regulatory, if you're interested in the sector, if it's something you'd like to go into. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Make sure to like if you enjoyed it. Share the video to help somebody else and subscribe. See you in my next one. Bye.